Hey everybody, so barring any recording refuffles, my computer decided to um, do an update last, well, two nights ago now. Um, I kind of screwed everything up, but barring anything happening, we are going to be rec re recording, reacting to Jordan Love brings refreshing vibe to the Packers locker room. This is Pro Football Talk, NFL and NBC. These guys, I've, I've watched them before in passing in the past, and they don't really say a lot of positive stuff about your favorite team. Packers are no exception in the past, so we are going to react to this video. Um, I heard that they actually said some nice things about the Packers in this one. So, we're going to watch for ourselves. We're going to stop in between and get our own thoughts on it. Um, so, without further ado, let's just jump into the video. Jordan Love bringing a refreshing vibe to the Packers locker room. That would be nice. Here we go. Jordan knows he got, has all the support around him. Uh, he's making plays out there celebrating with him. Uh, I mean, but guys are in here telling him, hey, Jordan, we got your back. We're going to make this easy for you as you're going to make this easy for us. And we're all going to feed off each other. So uh, we know that and we know it. Get out of here, device John. Depend on one person. It takes all the love. So. Sorry about that. We're going to go out there and play team ball. QB1, man. Best QB in the league right here. So, John Money. Now tell him, stop trying me, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ja money. A little love for Jordan Love, both from Aaron Jones and Jair Alexander. And look, that's just being a good teammate. I don't want to minimize what they said and what they did, but he's their guy now. And whether it's the well, yeah. player naturally drawing guys to him or the organization saying, there's your leader, follow him. This is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's good to see it happening, yeah. but this is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, it, it's. I would hope so. That's kind of the way that taking over as a leader as a quarterback of a football team is supposed to go. It's the way it's supposed to be. I think the thing that I look at it in just all the press conferences or interviews of players, it seems very genuine, right? Like just that right there. Like there yeah, seems to be so. like you know, a, 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 a refreshing vibe in that locker room about, hey, Jordan loves our guy, and it's it's team and all that. Man, they speak highly of him. You can tell. Of course they're going to speak highly of him. He's their leader. <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of obvious. But uh, yeah, They like, like the person, and I think that's where it starts, right? Like, I mean, Jair Alexander doesn't do that if he doesn't like the guy and believe in what he's seen a little bit, right? If he was like, oh. I don't think you know who Ja Alexander is. I don't think you know who Jair Alexander is. I feel like even if Jordan was struggling in practice, which um, I, I've seen that Jordan has been struggling a little bit with some passes, but he's also thrown some incredible passes. Um, I still feel like like Ja would, you know, give Jordan his due, even if he was struggling. Um, but I don't know. I, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but I just feel like Jair Alexander is the type of leader and um, of this football team, this veteran leader who, you know. Well, maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. Oh, man, this guy's a jerk, and, and he ain't crap. He, he looks like crap in practice. He's not going to get up over there and give him love in front of the camera and act like he loves him. That, that, a DB? No, that ain't happening. So I think there's some things to glean there about, hey, they like this guy. They're seeing talent on the field, and they're hopeful, and they're trying to not put too much pressure on him and letting him, you know, letting him know they got a pretty good team here, and they can do it you know, without him having to carry the squad. Well, we hope anyway, right? And let's be realistic. Regardless of whoever was to blame for the dysfunction between the front office and Aaron Rodgers yeah. for the past several years. Oh, Brian Gutekind's hand down. Hand down. Hand down. Chips all in the table. It was Brian Gutekind's. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, it, it, is, it was his fault. Ever since they drafted Jordan Love, but even before that, there was some stuff that was basically kept under wraps it came to fruition when they drafted Jordan Love that's got to be exhausting for the player right to have this quarterback who is so introspective and self-centered and and prickly and <laughs> the dude is on a different team and they're still they are still talking crap about Aaron Rodgers it just it'll it'll, it'll never stop. We had the the sound from Romeo Dobbs, the second year receiver, yeah, last right, year, right, or last week, saying, you know, Rogers never talked to me, right, and and and. 
I don't think that's true. Aaron said on more than one occasion last year that he talked to the rookies, Romeo especially. So, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's true. That he didn't talk to him. I really don't think that's and true. And then he starts gushing about Jordan Love. That's so, what I mean. That's what I'm you know, trying to say. Of course he is. He's a quarterback there. now. Yeah, if, he's his yeah. quarterback now. If Rodgers had just kind of become grumpy old man who was mad at everything, mad at the team, time for a change, that is going to wear oh, on Lord. the teammates. And so you remove him and you replace him with... Is this a, is this is this a video about Jordan Love being refreshing in the locker room, or is this a a, a bash on Aaron Rodgers video? Because I feel like it's a bash on Aaron Rodgers video right Somebody now. Somebody who's just happy to be here, happy to be part of the team. He doesn't have a stick up his ass about anything. And again, it may not be Rodgers' fault. It no, may all be the, the front office's fault. Oh, yeah, okay, right. there we go. But right. still, the whole thing just wears people out. Right. And I think that's part of it too. It's a reflection of they've turned the page. And no more of this constant wondering, is Aaron happy? Is he not happy? Is this his last year? Is it not his last year? Who's he upset with now? That's all gone. That's all gone. Regardless of how they feel about Aaron Rodgers, that element of their life is gone. Yes. And there's a certain freedom that comes with that when the next guy doesn't bring that to the table. Yeah, it, it, agreed. You're right. It just it hovered over them constantly. You know, if they win, hey, Rodgers got the credit. You know, they probably felt, you know, if they lost, it was like, oh, wait, you guys let Rodgers down. That was kind of, you know, the way it was portrayed to a degree. Yeah, but he shouldn't have felt right? that way. Yeah, it just, is he happy? What's it going on? Like what that. message is he sending out? What's he saying in this press conference that I might have to answer tomorrow? All that. Just, it, it, it was, and it's not just Rodgers' fault. Like you said, yeah, it's, it's everything. It just boiled Thank to you. a point where there was con constant scrutiny on that football team there. I'm excited for the Packers, Mike. Like, like, if you had to pick playoff teams right now. That's surprising for him to say. <laughs> I know we know there's a top three in the NFC, right? And I think you and I both agree. There's a top three? Top three. I, I always thought that there was just two, you know, Philadelphia and San Francisco. Who would be the third team? Am I, am I going nuts? <laughs> Am I dumb? I can't. Philadelphia, San Francisco. I thought the conference was pretty wide open other than those two. What do I, I agree know? that the rest of the division, the conference is up for grabs. But, man, I look at Green Bay, and like when we have to pick playoff teams, Green Bay is going to be a team that I, hmm, huh, man, their defense has got talent. It didn't play as good as it could last year. The offensive line's pretty good. They have young receivers. You know, Matt LaFleur is a damn good coach, right? So well, we agree on the one thing. They're there. like one of those teams where, yeah, the pressure's off. They're flying under the radar. At times. At times. There's some times where Matt LaFleur has some questionable decisions. But for most of the time, it's a pretty good coach. Right, but I, I, I would not be shocked if they got to the playoffs this year with Jordan Love at quarterback. Huh. I think they're going to be better than people realize. Yeah. The division is wide open. Right. Wow. I'm actually very shocked that these guys are, you know, giving us, us compliments, <laughs> especially with the situation we're in now. It's very cool. And Matt LaFleur won 13 games three straight years while in the middle of this Aaron Rodgers turmoil. He was oh, the boy. guy who Here was caught again. between Rodgers and the front office. And – what were we dealing with four years ago? The audible thing. The passive-aggressive Rodgers attempt to take to the media his frustration because Matt LaFleur wanted to run the offense a certain way, and Rodgers was like, hey, I've been here 15 years. I should have full and complete discretion to change the play to whatever I want to change it to. I shouldn't have two options in the huddle. I should be able to change the play if I see something that I think is going to work. And so he won that one. He knew how to, to press the buttons and pull the levers to win that one by using the media to his advantage. <laughs> And Matt LaFleur's Yeah, okay. Okay, whatever makes you feel better about it, but still buddy. won 13 games. He adapted, he adjusted to the personality of Aaron Rodgers. I think LaFleur is going to be fine. I think the Packers are going to be fine. There's three wild card spots up for grabs in the NFC. And I I think the Packers organizationally have enough there yeah. to find a way to get one of them. Yeah. I'm not ready to make my official pick yet, yeah. but I'm with you. Oh, yeah. I think they're going to be better. There's a lot of people out there that are, that are just happy to throw dirt on this Packers grave because they've been great for 30 years.
<laughs> That's true. There's been a lot of negativity towards the Packers, especially uh, now that the season's getting closer and closer and closer. There's a lot of noise in the negative connotation right now towards this Packers team. I mean, all, I'm old enough to... It's predictable, it's it's expected, but it's also annoying and hilarious, and uh, it's hilariously annoying. Remember the 20 years before they got Brett Favre, they sucked every year. Hey, the yeah, they did. Right. They've had 30 years of sustained contention, even though they've only won two Super Bowls. Every year they're good. They're not just going to disappear. No, there's a culture transition there. transition year right. from Aaron Rodgers to yeah. Jordan Love. Yeah, ex exactly right. There's a, a culture... Uh, you know, a battle testedness that I like to say every now and then. I don't think they're going anywhere. And like you said, you know, th that division's wide open. And the team that everybody expects to win really hasn't proven Jack Diddley squat yet, right? And this is the first time they got a bullseye on them, and that's Detroit I'm talking about. So, uh, yeah, I, I expect Green Bay to be a major player. I'm with you there, Mike. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching. Huh. Okay, well. That was an interesting watch. Um, these guys actually said something positive about the Packers <laughs> um, or a team in general. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, man. Um, I just, what I want, I've told a couple of people already, what I want more than anything this year is for Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love to both have successful years. That's all I want. If, if that can happen, um, I'll be happy. Now, what does success in that situation mean? I, I don't know. Um, because Aaron Rodgers and the Jets are going to be fine. Okay, they're going to be fine. Um, this Packers team, on the other hand, it's it's it, there's a, a question mark. There's a few of them. I mean, like it it all really hinges on how Jordan Love plays this year, right? Like they've got a solid base around him right now. Um, Aaron Jones is back. AJ Dillon is back. So you got that running back tandem. Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs are in their sophomore years, and Christian Watson is probably going to be our number one receiver, followed by Romeo Dobbs, prop most likely. And then I feel like maybe the rookie out of Michigan State, Jaden Reed, is going to be that slot guy that can bring that dynamic speed, maybe that Tyreek Hill kind of a um, amount of speed. So it's going to be interesting. We've got that. The offensive line is pretty much the same. David Bakhtiari is going to be back, hopefully healthy. Uh, because when he's healthy, he's probably one of the you know, top five left tackles in the, in the game. Defense. I would expect them to be out for blood because, like they mentioned in here, the defense was all hyped up last year. This defense is going to be incredible, and then they just they laid an egg. So um, I, I would like to think that they're out for blood this year and, and for vengeance. Jair is back. Rasul Douglas is going to probably be the number two corner. Um, I think Keyshawn Nixon is going to be taking on a different role in the defense as well. Or an expanded role, perhaps. Um, yeah, also he's going to be the returner. So that that was the jolt for us late in the year last year that we should have had from the start, really. Uh, but yeah, a lot of a lot of good base around Jordan. It's just a matter of how is the kid going to do, and that's what it's going to rely on. So there is pressure there. But Jordan said in one of his uh, press conferences recently that there's pressure in the NFL just in general. So it's a downplay, but you know it's facts. And we'll see if he can back up those those words. So, yeah, a good watch. It's always nice to to see, you know, people that are always negative all the time kind of say something nice about uh, your favorite sports team for once. So, if you like the video, if you like the reaction, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you haven't. Um, if you want to see more content from from me, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video or thing that I post on social media. See ya.